Today we will discuss Death Be Not Proud by John Donne. It's sonnet number 10 from his series of 19 sonnets. Holy sonnets are divine meditations. It's a 14 line poem and it follows the structure of the Petrarchan sonnet. The poet talks to death in the poem, Death? Yes, death. I know what you are thinking. Death is an abstract concept, but what if he represents abstract concepts like death in a human form? Then the poet can speak to death, right? So the representation of an abstract concept in a human form is called personification. The poet personifies death in the poem, and he is talking to death, but why? Let me give you a little information about the background of the poem. Don was a Catholic, and Catholics were a minority. Later he converted from Catholicism to Anglicanism, the official church of England. He became the Dean of St. Paul's Cathedral in London. During his service, Don suffered from illness, most probably typhoid. During the time, it was fatal. Therefore, we can understand he was in a life and death situation. When one is in such a state, the thoughts related to death will occur naturally. But we always want to stay away from it. Whenever we think of death, we panic because we are afraid of death. However, the poet challenges the popular notion of death. At the beginning of the sonnet, he says that people usually call death mighty and dreadful. When man's end moment arrives, death neither waits nor listens to anyone. No power of the universe can stand against death. Therefore, that is powerful. That takes everything away from a person's life, his loved ones, his possessions, his time, and man is helpless about it. To put it in a nutshell, that is the end of life. That brings sadness to a person's life. Thus, we call that a terrible moment in our life. Despite the common notion of death, the poet addresses death and commands him not to be proud. He says that that is neither mighty nor dreadful. That thinks that he takes man's life from him. But in reality, man don't die. Neither man nor the poet can die. Death can't do anything to anyone. Instead of feeling scared, he feels pity for death and calls him poor death. The poet gives reasons for not being afraid of death. First, that is like having a rest and sleep. We get much pleasure from rest and sleep. He compares that to rest and sleep. If both states can give us pleasure, then that will be more pleasurable than the two states. The poet says that when the best man of society, that means patriots, soldiers, and virtuous men die, there is no need to worry. The bones of the body decay, but the soul doesn't die, it goes to heaven. Here it gives us a hint of what he preached. According to the Christian belief, after the demise of a human being, the soul leaves the body and goes to heaven if the person has done more virtuous acts than sins. That is the intermediate state between life and eternal life. Here I want to emphasize the statement, man doesn't die. To justify the point, the poet refers to the Christian belief. However, I want to interpret it scientifically. Our body primarily consists of oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. In physics, it is said that matter is nothing but energy. When we cremate or bury a corpse, the carbon in the body will merge with the earth. Later, a tree or bacteria will get benefit from it. From the same tree, fruits will come out. Birds or human beings will consume them. The process goes on and on. So we are physically nowhere, but we are everywhere at the micro level. Let me give you another example. If we boil water, the molecules in the water travel upward as bubbles. The same molecules in the water form a cloud and come down as rain. So in the entire process, it just changes its state. Similarly, when we die, our state is changed. Therefore, we can die. I hope the explanation has given a new dimension to the statement. 
anyway come back to the poem the second reason is that is a slave the poet compares that to a slave he mocks that by calling him a slave that is slave to fate change kings and desperate men that has to appear before a man if fate decides the end of a man's life even if someone dies by chance or accident that also has to appear there similarly it is the kings who can decide whom to execute or punish so the kings decide the time of death of a person and that has to obey the command of the kings even in the case of desperate men that can do nothing desperate men probably refer to those men who choose to end their life by themselves in all situations that obeys man like a slave and delivers the soul he also associates that with poison war and sickness that has no will and he is powerless therefore that is not the master of man's destiny notice how he presents a contradictory notion of that furthermore the poet makes fun of that by saying that that can't even give pleasure to man at first he says that that can delight man more than rest and sleep later he says that poppy opium and charms magic and spells can bring better rest than death therefore that should not feel proud though that is like sleeping it doesn't last long after the short sleep we wake eternally thereafter there is no death death will die here again references to the christian belief in eternal life and corinthians of paul the apostle are clear saint paul writes in the 15th chapter of the corinthians that the last enemy to be destroyed is death according to saint paul one day christ will return to the earth the second coming will be a critical time for his enemies he will subdue all his enemies including death itself therefore death thou shall die the poet logically tries to argue that the death is not powerful the way we usually think of it for the theme of the sonnet visit the vlog the link is in the description so what's your view on death are you afraid of death